Kyle from All, All Media Reviews, Friday, um, what is today, today? August 25th. Going to the doctor later, but I'm going to continue on the vinyl collection. This is vinyl collection number five. By the way, it's a new Capital City song today, which is pretty good, called Summertime With You, with Spencer Ludwig. Um, new Pepe Deluxe, probably in the works. New uh, Team Me album coming out in two weeks. I need to do like a video blog and talking more about this stuff, maybe. Anyway, continuing on with the bees. So, um... The next shelf right here, and which I'm gonna take the rest of those out and maybe make a second video. I'm finding that these maybe they go 10 to 15 minutes. So I have two vinyl records from Catherine Paul's band, you know, current band, Black Belt Eagle Scout, her debut album, Mother of My Children, I believe. She had like an EP before that. I think it was, yeah, this came out in 2015? No, 2018. Longer ago. Anyway. Um, good record, kind of post-rock, you know, dream pop, dream, you know, post-rock, you know, a little bit of, um, shoegazy kind of stuff, like a Mazzy Starish. Um, and then the new record from 2020, or newest album from 2023 that came out this year, um, The Land, The Water, The Sky, I have as well. I showed that a few months ago when I got this after the, I saw, saw the show at the Cedar Cultural Center in Minneapolis, so. All right, moving on, I have two albums from which, because of the condition of the cases, I'm intending to replace them. But I have the first two Blackfield albums, of course. Blackfield and Blackfield 2. Super melancholy, you know, progressive pop of the sort. This album especially, I have a, a huge amount of sentimentality. Specifically, I was listening to this when, when Ariel Daniel, the Porcupine Tree fangirl who find it big as MySpace page passed away, the 17-year-old friend taking pictures. I was, I was thinking of this. I listened to this a lot. There's a couple other albums at the same time. Um, ours is album Distorted Lullabies and um, what was the other one? Anyway, it was November of 2005. Um, it was, uh, or 2004 actually. Yeah. But yeah, the first two Blackfield albums are great. Um, I mean, every track on the first one especially, <laughs> Cloudy Now, uh, hello. Um, it's very dreamy, very nostalgic, you know, to me. Hello, uh, let's see, the, the Hole in Me, Pain, I love that, that track, so, but yeah, I guess I got a little, I was, no, this wasn't, yeah, but a little crease on that one. And then the second one, which came out, and that was 2004, this one came out in 2007, I believe, the same day, Catfly Set Sail the Prairie and House of Fools, um, uh, Live and Learn came out. Um, but, uh, was it... Christianines is probably the best track. Epidemic is another one. My Gift of Silence, The End of the World. Where Is My Love? I mean, once. There's a lot of great tracks. It's almost as good. I don't consider it quite as good, but it's, again, melancholy, progressive, psych pop of a sort. You know, it's not as layered as Porcupine Tree or as sort of... I don't know. I mean, it is an off... It, you could definitely confuse some of the music on here for Porcupine Tree or some of the Stephen Wilson stuff, but I guess you could say it's more song-oriented. <laughs> Even though Porcupine Tree has a lot of just straight songs. Anyway. Alright, so moving on. Uh, Black Mountain, their album, their third album, it came out in 2000, oh, 2008. Um, in the Future, a Canadian band that sort of... It's kind of stoner rock, but, you know, it's progressive at the same time. It reminded me a little of Pure Reason Revolution. Uh, there's three tracks on this album that stand out to me, um, among others. Tyrants... Um, Bright Lights, I was thinking of Light Bright the Game, uh, that's an epic, and there's one other one, I think it's Stormy High, anyway, yeah, I mean, female, male vocals, um, yeah, it's like progressive stoner rock of sort, you could say, they put out records since that didn't do as much for me in their first couple records, I don't remember getting that into, it was just this one, really, in the future, I always wanted them to come back and make something I love, but it hasn't happened, unfortunately, um, so let's see here. Now we got yeah, Block Party. This is a this was a definitely a surprise to me. I this is their album, the second album, Weekend in the City from 2007. My favorite Block Party album. I'm not surprised I have this. I was always the assumption I had the first album, Silent Alarm, which is probably the most fan friendly, the most the favorite. I have a couple. I have the, their other CDs. Um, but yeah, the song Uniform. I will argue to anyone is progressive rock. <laughs> um. But even though they're like a post-punk band, they're, you know, they're just, this has a lot of great riffs, the energy, even though it's very kind of dark lyrically about, 
you know, like, gangs in some part of London or whatever. Um, because, like, hunting for witches, um, the prayer, you know, um, Kreuzberg. It's, some of it is political, sociopolitical, too, but, um, this, I did never, I know they opened, they play, they, Mew opened for them, and I knew about them, but when I, I finally checked this out, this was their second album, I was like, oh, this band's actually pretty good. They're almost progressive in some ways, but anyway. Um, and now, um, what's his name, uh, from Menomina's with them. Um, Justin um, Harris actually is a member of the band, but um, but yeah, I don't have Silent Alarm. Not at this point. I, I need to get that. Um, there are others I don't know about. So, Okay, so Blue Canoe. I, I got this because my friend, a friend of mine named Creighton talked about this. 80s Prague. I don't think they're from Minnesota, but I could be wrong about that. Jacket made in Canada. I haven't listened to it, but I, I you know, he used to always talk about Blue Canoe, uh, it's Prague of sorts. Came out in 1985. This album, and I think it's just a self-titled. And I don't know if they have. They may have one or two others, but um, mid. Let's see. Sealed mid 80s. Pro yeah, Liquid Records. Anyway, uh, need to listen to that, of course. Um, so boy, so here's some more local stuff. I have a bunch of these. Um, in yeah, okay, yeah, a bunch of local, a couple of local releases. So. Boiled Lead, um, this this one, I, I actually am surprised I don't have more of their, their records, but I know I'd, I see them living in Minnesota at the record stores. You see their records off and on. But this, what is this album even titled? The Crack, maybe? Um, or maybe a, t a self-titled album. I haven't, I, I don't have time to open up the, the you know, the it's sealed and everything. That's what they do at the stores. But, um, because I'm looking here and I don't see anything. It may just be a self-titled so, you know, it's kind of a mystery of like where I bought a record. You know, you can... Yeah, maybe this is a self... It's either called The Crack or... Yeah, I think it is The Crack. It's either the, That's the label. It might be the label, actually. So this is just the self-titled album. But I'll, I'll give one or two tidbits about Boiling Lead in just a minute. Man, I can't even find a year on this sucker. But they're from here. Um, Irish... I, I, I mean, it's... It's folky Irish, but it it's more than that. There's a lot. Of, they're more adventurous. Um, they're kind of a jam band of sorts too. This is Hotheads, though. Also, um, this came out '86. So, um, so Boy and Lead, Dean McGraw, who I love, my favorite musician from Minnesota, really. Um, individual musician had even became a member at at one point. Um, Todd Menton, and there's a bunch of members of Boyd and Lead that I know. Todd Menton's like the one guy who's like been consistent. Drew Miller also, who actually runs a record store and sells records himself, but um, they collaborate. It's like jazz circles. A lot of these guys collaborate with different projects too. Um, so, but they're renowned somewhat in Minnesota. I mean, outside of Minnesota, I'm not sure. Uh, Trampled by Turtles is probably the more well known band of a, of a similar style the last couple decades, but I've always contended Boyd and Lead I like more, but. But they are Irish of a sort, you know, so. Am I into Irish music? Eh, I can take or leave some of it, but some, but it's done well, you know, they're really better known live, but, you know, you see them, it's like, oh, it's Boyd and Lead. You know, not, these records don't have Dean McGraw on them, but um, that's part of it. When Dean started playing with them, I was like, I need to get more into Boyd and Lead, so. So, uh, going on to another local uh, band that, this band, I would highly recommend to any prog fans. They have a Primus element that's really cool. They're called The Book of Right On. This is their first, I think this is their first album, All These Songs About Music. Their second album really never came out. They put out, like, I have, like, a 10-inch from them or 7-inch also, but I was so excited about them. The problem is that the members of this band, they have, like, 12 members or 14 members or something, but have a history of being in bands and having a lot of, like, potential, and then they didn't, they fizzled out, so um, they had, like, two drummers and everything. and But, they, yeah, they had, like, this cool Primus element... I was just, for like about a six month window of time, I was thinking this is the next big thing if you like progressive rock and you, especially if you live in Minnesota, but Book of Right On, you know, but, um, and I know I saw them the night that I tried to get into, get a, get into Jethro Tull and wasn't able to, and I went to go see them instead, and I was real, kind of happy in some ways. I mean, I wanted to see Tull, but anyway, Book of Right On, this album came out, I want to say 2012, maybe 2011, early 2010s, I know, but. Um, all right, so now we have Mike Van Art related the British theater record, the full length. I don't have the EP, sadly. Um, but I think this is, is it? No, no, it's called Mastery. 
came out in... It was the year after, I think, the Demon Joke, so I think it was 2016, but it's more textured, more electronic at sorts, but it really still works to me, even though I still prefer Vinart's own band and Ocean Size a little bit more, but the EP someday I'd like to find, but they sold out quickly, and a lot of Vinart people are, like Vinart and Ocean Size fans are collectors of vinyl, of course, so... All right, so I only have, I think, the one Broken Social Scene record, but this is the one to have. It's uh, You Forgot It In People, um, which last time I listened to it, I, I kind of felt like I, I used to like it more than I do. But And, of course, it, they have, like, Feist, and a lot of people did other things that were part of Broken Social Scene. Um, the main guy's Brendan Canning, and I forget the other guy's name. Um, but, you know, among their catalog, this has still always stood out to the number one record. I mean, that most people rate it as the highest. Um... I, could, I call it post-rock of a kind. It's, they're from Canada or whatever, for whatever that's where There's a lot of bands doing post-rock in Canada, including Godsby, Blemper, Emperor, or Most Serene Republic. I think they're from Canada, too. Um, but, you know, it's not post-rock in the traditional sense of, like, the long-winded sort of crescendos. It's just using a lot of post-rock instrumentation, a lot of, you know, like, whatever, chamber instruments and that, that kind of stuff. But this one just has the best songs among all the records. I, the self, I have some of their other records on CD, the self-titled... Uh, feel Good Loss. I just, I felt like the, this was where they hit their peak and they never made anything better, but anyway. So, let's see here. I have, speaking of Canada, yeah, I have um, Canada and then, yeah, so. This is Bruce Peninsula. Um, had a really nice note from them. Um, their, their album that came out a couple of years ago, I want to say it was 2020. Was it 2019 or 2020? No Earthly Sound, their comeback record. Uh, band from Bruce Peninsula is an area of, like, I don't know if it's eastern Ontario. It's the eastern part of Canada, whether it be near Toronto, called Bruce Peninsula. Um, but this band is like tribal prog. Tribal art rock, you know, of a sort. Um, this, this most recent album, I can't say I've listened to nearly as much as their first two, but I still enjoyed it. I remember that, and I probably need to go back to it still. But, um, yeah, it was great that they... Uh, they gave, you know, because I, you know, I I love them, and their singer, Neil Haverty, well, he, the original lead singer, he hasn't been able to do as much because he, he unfortunately developed uh, leukemia, but then I think it went in remission. That was the whole thing. But this album has more vocals from the female singer, um, which I can't remember her name right now. She has a solo album. <laughs> Misha Bauer, I think it is. But um, it still has a lot of the Bruce Peninsula sound, of course. They also have this one track they released as a single in, like, 2012 called Of Song, which is just breathtaking. It's fantastic. Anyway, this is Northly Sound from, I think it was 2020 from Bruce Peninsula. And then, okay, let's see here. I have two albums, I believe, from another local band. I think I want to make sure I'm doing this right. Yep. This is, uh, actually, I'm doing this out of order because he would go first. So, yes. That's, I want to do this. Is... <laughs> so I only have one... I guess, I'm surprised, on vinyl, Bruford album, the Bruford tapes, and then I think this is, is this the live album? Yes, which has Hell's Bells and um, One of a Kind, but Dave Stewart and Jeff Berlin, of course, and the unknown John Clark, but yeah, a friend of mine played Hell's Bells on the radio once, I think it was from this album, from this live album, from 79, so, you know, for J Bill Bruford, you know, Troubadour, you know, African Crimson, he, Crimson stopped for whatever was on hiatus. He did play with Genesis, and he, he had the Earthwork stuff and his solo stuff. But, uh, so he, he gigged a lot live. Of course, his background, his original background was jazz, so it makes sense this is more jazzy than the prog stuff he was doing, of course. But, but yeah, this is a, a great record called um, The Bruford Tapes from 1979. <laughs> Parental Guidance suggested maybe there's some expletives in the, the recordings, like between songs. I don't know. <laughs> Um, maybe his cymbal bat or something, or something fell on the ground. So I have two albums from local band. They're not really anymore. They're called Brute Heart. Now, Jackie Becky, I, who's from Brute Heart, is doing some new music, but and she actually um, works with my wife, sort of has worked with my, she worked for, anyway, because uh, she went into library science. But these are the two albums they put out. Lonely Hunter, that was their second album. I think the first one was just a self-title. Musically, it's kind of like... Uh, my, my friend of mine was comparing them to War Paint. I don't know if I'm comparing them to War. They're more like like a Jefferson Airplane kind of thing uh, with, like, violin. And it's I think it's, it's an all-female band. It's just a three-piece. But, um, yeah. Oh, I think... Is this Brass Beads? Is this Brass Beads is one of the songs. I thought it was a self-title, but maybe it's called Brass Beads. I haven't listened to them in a long time, so it's like 
you know, jogging my memory. But I remember this is the album that came out when I, after I became a fan, or came out at, after I become a fan, and this is the newest album they put out, um, The Hunter, The Lonely Hunter, Lonely Hunter, rather. So it was like 2012 and 2013, or around that time. So, and then the last record, one of my favorite records in this whole B section, Burst, final record until maybe they put something out new because they've been doing live performances for the past four or five years. Uh, Lazarus Bird from 2008. I absolutely adore this record. It was a massive deal for me to finally find it. Um, I Hold Vertigo, Cripple God, and We Watch the Silver Rain are among the... I mean, it's just textured sludge, progressive sludge metal. Um, they're from Sweden, I believe. I never got to see them live. Maybe I'll have a chance at some point, but they did tour the U.S., but they didn't come here. They played in Chicago, I think. I was thinking of going to see them, but it was their farewell tour at that point. But um, I've said it a, a many times, and I'll, I'll, I get bears repeating. I liken this to basically doing the kind of music Mastodon, this, this album especially, has done, but this is better than anything Mastodon's ever done, by a lot, actually. I still like Mastodon, you know, the last record, Hushed and Grim, by um, every Mastodon fan, to me, owes it themselves to hear this album at least once. If they have not, then they're doing themselves a disservice because this is a fantastic record. And when it came out, some of the people, like, because they have earlier records, I have those on CD, were thrown off a little bit by it because, like, well, they got more progressive. A little bit, what, Between the Barry and Me were doing and, like, all these protests they hear, all these bands that were doing, like, kind of sludgy, like, metal core kind of extreme metal were be emphasizing prog more and more. And, um, yeah, I, I, this is a fantastic record. This is not the original cover. It's interesting. They changed it. I have a few vinyl records that have different covers. So, so that's it for the bees. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. i got a couple more videos to do, and maybe at least one more to do today to finish this shelf off. But uh, we'll see you next time.